Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Mass Financial Services Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Dan Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanket Chedda from Dan Capital Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And a warm welcome uh, to uh, the call to discuss uh, Mass Financial's Q4 results. Uh, we have with us uh, entire senior management uh, uh, on the call today, uh, Mr. Kamlesh Gandhi, who is a chairman and managing director, Mr. Dash, uh, Ms. Dashna Pandya, uh, who is director and CEO, uh, Mr. Amit Jain, who is a CFO, and other senior management team as well. So without further ado, I'll hand the call over to uh, Mr. Kamlesh Gandhi for the opening remarks, uh, which we will follow up by uh, question and answers. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sakit. Uh, thank you, Sankit. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. Happy to connect to all of you once again uh, to discuss the 116th quarter of our consistent financial performance. So, friends, 116th quarter is a very long time and happy to share with you that we have been in a position to perform very consistently over all these years and God willing will continue to do the same in the future also. Um, just to uh, give you the uh, information on few of the important milestones that we crossed uh, in this year. So while uh, you can never be satisfied, but we are quite happy to cross certain milestones. Uh, namely, as shared with all of you, we crossed a very important milestone of crossing 10,000 crores uh, last year. Uh, we got upgraded to, uh, we got our rating upgraded to AA minus uh, from CAF. As such, it was little overview. And, and another important milestone, we crossed uh, 250 crores in consolidated uh, profit after tax. So these are few of the important milestones we crossed, which will lay a very strong foundation uh, for the decade. As all of you know that when we meet, I always uh, share with all of you that at mass uh, for us, uh, decade is a medium term view and we never take a short term view and hence we are in a position to uh, concentrate on the fundamentals and have demonstrated this uh, robust financial performance over all these years. While my colleagues will take you to the detailing in number, if I just uh, take you through few of the strategic things for this quarter, is that if the growth uh, translates to a 26% uh, in AUM and 23.41 in PAT in consolidated basis. Uh, on a standalone basis also we grew at around close to 23% in AUM and PAT. Uh, as far as our housing finance company is concerned, and I, I think all of you might might remember that we were uh, <clears throat> have been giving the guidance that this company is now on cusp of delivering robust results, and very happy to share that we can uh, we could grow this quarter at a very robust 44% this quarter. Having said that, we got good opportunity to grow at 44% this quarter. But the guidance remains in the in the realms of 30 to 35 percent growth, which we'll try to surpass. So from the housing front also, we could register a very robust growth, a robust growth on AUM profitability. Uh, very importantly, on the quality of the assets. Uh, as I talked to you, our quality of asset in our parent company is a gross phase assets of around 1.51 percent, uh, holding on a buffer provisioning of another 0.24 percent. Uh, in our housing finance company also, the quality of asset is very benign. Uh, that is uh, net uh, stage 3 of uh, close to 0.6%. Uh, capital adequacy at a very uh, at a very comfortable or at a very fundamentally strong level of close to 24% in capital adequacy with close to 21% in tier 1 and the rest in tier 2. Uh, housing finance company also with a very robust uh, capital adequacy of more than 38% where we get the advantage of a lower risk weightage 
uh, being in the affordable space. Uh, uh, the other way to look at it is the leverage. Leverage remains at a very comfortable leverage of uh, uh, around uh, four in our uh, parent company and the same uh, in the case less than four in our housing finance company. Uh, so all in all, the development for the entire year has been in sync with our understanding of all these years of running the business, of making a fundamentally strong business. Where if I talk about ROEs, ROEs that around on a yearly basis it around 16.5%. The last quarter registered a ROE of 16.98%. Uh, so we have been advocating that we are a company which will endeavor to grow anywhere between 20 to 25%, maintain ROEs in the range of 15 to 17% a very strong self-propelling capital model. Having said that, we have an enabling resolution to raise capital whenever we require. Uh, as I shared with you last time, we have an enabling resolution of 700 crores. Uh, we are met, we, I met few investors in the last quarter. We'll be meeting few investors this quarter also. But we would take our own time and we'll decide and select the right set of investors who can align uh, with our objective of consistent performance where and in our belief that consistency and steady, uh, steadiness is the best way to reach your destination. <clears throat> in terms of uh, our distribution, uh, I think uh, we have concentrating or we have concentrated on our direct distribution substantially. Uh, uh, our RSE distribution has also concentrated. While as I've shared number of times that our direct distribution will grow at a faster pace as compared to our indirect distribution. And hence, this, as I talked to you, we are at around 68, 32, uh, uh, ratio in favor of our direct distribution. Uh, going forward, we see that setting anywhere between uh, 70 to 75 in favor of our direct distribution. This is in line with the guidance we have been giving since few quarters, and very happy to share that we could achieve uh, those guidance. Uh, in terms of uh, the assets we saw, uh, we still driven predominantly uh, MSME funders, around 80% of our business coming from MSME. Uh, and the rest coming from wheels and less than 6% uh, coming from our SPL business. Uh, housing uh, contributes a modest 6% currently, but going forward uh, with the type of growth trajectory we are anticipating, it should also <coughs> contribute very meaningfully to the overall uh, assets of the company. Uh, on the liability side, as I shared and Ankit will share in detail, uh, we are well capitalized and uh, as usual, uh, we have a very strong debt line. Uh, al almost uh, we, we have tied up for uh, till Q1 or say to, to an extent for Q2 also as I talked to you. And with rating upgrade, we will have more opportunities uh, to tap more avenues and also uh, in the long, in the medium term, uh, reduce our cost of uh, borrowing. Uh, on operations, uh, we continue to embrace technology adequately. Uh, we we are a company which is having our own technology team in house. Uh, we have the, we have one of the nice one of the most strongest LMS uh, as far as LMS is concerned. We have developed alloys for all our systems, and uh, we we are embarking on core banking also. We have set up a team at Mass uh, to look after core banking, and within few quarters. I think we can will be in a position to share uh, the progress on that also. Uh, and our team remains a strong team of 3,700 people uh, with a big team of collectors uh, succeeding and failing together has held us in a good state with more than 550 people now with us for more than five years. And obviously the co-owners of this company, the uh, core team, which has been with company with, uh, for a range from 15 to 25 years. So that forms a very formidable second line of action, uh, second line of team, uh, with Dwani also from the promoters group quite active, and he'll be completing his decade uh, this July. Uh, he joined in 2014. Uh, so with uh, this remarks, uh, rather than taking much of your time on, on this commentary, which many of you know, uh, I will hand over to my colleague Dashnava. She will take you uh, through detail in number, <coughs> and then to Ankit and then uh, we will be open for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we are very happy to share that uh, in, the, in the last quarter, we crossed a very important milestone of 10,000 crore on consolidated basis, and this quarter we have uh, crossed this milestone on standalone basis. 
so if we look first we look at the consolidated numbers uh, our a consolidated aum as on march 24 is now 10522 crore as compared to 8506 crore last year and uh, pad for the year uh, is 254 crore as compared to 205 uh, crore which is 26% growth in aum and 23.7% growth in pad If we look at the standalone numbers, uh, starting with the breakup of the AUM, um, our uh, MSME portfolio is contributing 80%. 4,800, 4,385 crore is MISC MISC crore is contributing 80%. Uh, MISC crore is contributing 80%. 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 Seven forty-eight crore is commercial vehicle loan, and uh, salaried personal loan is five eighty-eight crore, which is five point eight percent of the total AUM. Uh, that is twenty-five point one two percent growth in uh, standalone AUM. If we look at the total income on quarterly basis, uh, it says uh, it is now three twenty three twenty-nine crore. So last year it was two sixty-eight crore. This is 23.04 percent uh, increase in total income on quarterly basis. Profit before tax has increased by 29.37 percent on quarterly basis. Last quarter Q4 23 it was 70 crore, 41 lakh, and uh, this Q4 is 91 crore. Profit after tax has increased by 22.50 percent from 55.55 crore to 68 crore this quarter. If we look at the yearly number uh, on on annual basis, uh, total income has increased by 30.29 percent from 940 crore to uh, 1225 crore. Profit before tax has increased by 25.21 percent from 265 crore to 331 crore, and profit after tax has increased by uh, 23.28 percent from 201 crore to 248 crore. so uh, uh, this is the financial numbers if we look at the portfolio quality as uh, shared by sir uh, our gross stage 3 is 2.25% uh, and net stage 3 is 1.5 or 51% in december quarter it was 2.23% gross stage 3 and 1.48% net stage 3 now coming to uh, our housing Finance uh, performance. Now our portfolio in housing finance is 596 crores. Uh, that is 44.26 percent uh, rise in uh, uh, AUM. Last year it was 413 crores. Total income has increased by 42.58 percent on quarterly basis, from 12 crore 40 lakhs to 17 crore 68 lakhs. Profit before tax has increased by 54.21 percent from 1 crore 70 lakhs to 2 crore 62 lakhs. Profit after tax is 51.55 percent rise from 1 crore 37 lakhs to 2 crore 8 lakhs. And uh, if we look at the annual numbers, uh, uh, increase in income is 42.75 percent from 43 crore 75 lakhs to 62 crore 46 lakhs. Uh, PAT has increased by 18.31 percent from 8 uh, crore to 9 crore 58 lakhs. Uh, that, that that was PAT PBT and PAT has increased by 19.48 percent from 6 crore 34 lakhs to 7 crore 58 lakhs. Here also the portfolio quality is uh, very stable. For uh, the gross stage three asset is 0.90 percent and net stage three asset is uh, 0.66 percent. In the last quarter, it was 0.8 was one percent gross stage three and 0.58 percent net uh, stage three. So this was about the performance in our house, uh, housing finance company. Now I'll request Ankit uh, to brief you about the liability management. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, all. To elaborate on the liability, capital liability management, uh, the company through its efficient liability management. Was able to maintain an average liquidity of around 800 crore during the quarter, and unutilized cash flow facility of rupees 575 crore. In addition, the company has sanctioned on hand to the tune of around 1100 crore, which will fill up the requirement 
in the coming quarter. In the March quarter, company did around rupees 600 crore direct SME transaction. The company further has around 1000 crore sanction on hand, which will be utilized during the quarter and next year. The off book portfolio is around 32% of the total EVM. We as a strategy aims to maintain around 20-25% of EVM uh, as off book through direct assignment and around 5-10% to off book as a co-lending. Uh, we, uh, the, the company has available cash flow facility of around 1700 crore, out of which uh, we maintain utilization level of 70 to 80%, which portion is kept as equity buffer. We raised around 890 crore term loan during the quarter, with an average maturity of 3 to 5 years. This helps us to further strengthen the asset liability maturity pattern. We are strongly placed with respect to structural liquidity for the period at the 31st March, and thereby the liquidity is adequate and cash flow in all the community bucket is positive. In terms of capital adequacy, uh, the tier 1 capital is 20.33%, with a total tier, uh, uh, total capital adequacy of 24.05%. Our debt equity is around four times. In terms of cost of borrowing, the, the, the cost of borrowing for the quarter was 9.82%. The cost of borrowing for March quarter last year was 9.34%. But the better part is the cost, the, the cost of borrowing has remained stable if we compare with the last quarter. We expect cost of borrowing to be around this level in the coming quarter also. One achievement in terms of uh, credit uh, rating upgrade whereby the company long-term bank facility and NCD rating have been updated to double A minus from here, uh, uh, from the A plus. This upgrade in rating will help us our drive uh, to diversify our resource mix and back to at a competitive pricing. Thank you. So now we are open for the Q&A round. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from Hartik Doshi from White Whale Partners. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, you know, I wanted to just understand on the operating expenses side. Um, the you know the operating expenses had gone up as a percentage of AUM and as a percentage of um, you know NI and FI23 because we were investing more into branches of people and moving more uh, of the uh, you know sourcing. Uh, through our distribution. Uh, but since then, it was kind of gradually trending down, but it seems like in the fourth quarter, it has again kind of gone back up uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Can you just maybe talk a bit about whether any particular investment or any one-off here? See, on uh, cost of operations, uh, as uh, I've, I've been sharing since long that uh, the right way to look at it is maintaining our ROAs. So the cost of operations, uh, once we have our retail at around 70-75%, in terms of percentage to year, will still increase. But at the same time, will be compensated by the yield what we will get. And hence, our ROAs will remain stable. If you see, our ROA has been stable at around 2.80%, reflecting on the fact that the overall ROA dynamics has not been disturbed. And in terms of uh, operations to NII and operations, uh, cost of operations to AUM, uh, I still believe that uh, we are at quite uh, efficient stage despite of the fact that many of the branches are yet to pick up on volumes. So once the branches pick up on volume, but at the same time that efficiency to an extent will be offset by opening up new branches, investment in technology and all. So we see this operational uh, cost at this level or maybe little higher without uh, affecting our ROAs. Okay. And so I guess that is also the reason why our NIMS have gone up is uh, related to this. Uh, NIMS and OPEX are both going up proportionally and ROAs are remaining stable. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
the other question that i had was that we you know we are continuing to grow our salary personal loans very strongly uh you know how are you seeing uh, the trends out there and the asset quality uh, kind of indicators and any concerns and and second part of that is how much of this is being done through our partnerships with fintech and how much is being done through our own distribution Actually, uh, salary personal loan is a new product, a very low base. Uh, we continue to uh, maintain that this will be less than 10% of our total AUM going for, uh, forward. Uh, we have maintained this even before the RBI raised uh, the risk weightage, uh, uh, risk weightage for this uh, particular unsecured personal loan. So we continue to maintain that it will be less than 10%. And uh, in terms of our contribution from fintech. Uh, I think currently around 35 to 40 percent of the business in salary personal loan comes through our fintech partnerships. Sorry, 35 to 40 percent you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just and one last question is, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, that uh, we're looking to do the QIP, and you had meetings last quarter. You will continue to have this quarter, but roughly, I mean, you know, what is the timeline? Are we looking to do this QIP this quarter, or is it open ended? It is absolutely open ended uh, because this is an exercise uh, done very well in advance, uh, not from the statutory requirement or not even from the gearing point of view. Uh, but in our next phase of growth, if you look at one link of chain at a time from 10 to 20,000 crores, uh, we thought that some infusion of capital will further strengthen the balance sheet. So it is absolutely open ended. We'll go on meeting investors quarter on quarter, uh, look at the right set of valuations and the investors and take our decision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Shripal Doshi from Equiris. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening and congrats on a great set of numbers. Good evening. Yeah. Sir, my first question was pertaining to the credit rating upgrade, so congrats on that as well. So how do you see that uh, you know, benefiting us on the cough side going ahead? Uh, and, and, and while there was this, uh, you know, risk weights increase by the RBI, while well, that doesn't impact us significantly, but uh, with this, uh, so, so point number one, that impact, and point number two, this benefit, how should we see, uh, you know, the cough uh, going ahead because of these two reasons playing out? The credit rating upgrade uh, will definitely help us in the medium term. Majority of our loans are MCL are back. So we will take this opportunity to renegotiate loans uh, with all our lenders uh, as and when there is a MCLR research, uh, including uh, our negotiation on rates when we take a new borrowing. So that will uh, that will kick in right from this quarter. Uh, but the overall impact on the cost of fund will take around a few quarters to 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 be reflected in the uh, balance sheet. Uh, in terms of uh, credit squeeze, I think uh, if uh, I, if I t if we take it in the right perspective, uh, RBI for companies like us who are mainly into MSME funding and growing cautiously are uh, are not uh, against uh, lending to companies like us. Even the even even if you see banks, they are more than happy to lend to the companies who are very consistent in their approach, growing in a calibrated manner. And secondly, all the business what we do falls under the priority sector lending as far as the bank is concerned. So for so for us, uh, the, the, there was there was no impact of any of the liquidity as far there was no liquidity squeeze or credit squeeze, but there was no impact on the RBI commentary from time to time on NBFC. Uh, secondly, with our credit uh, upgrade rating upgrade, we will look at diversification of uh, resources. We might uh, we will we might like to have more of capital market participation uh, going forward, so as to decrease our dependence only on banks. So within few years, I think uh, capital market, which is currently around eight to ten percent, can be anywhere between fifteen to twenty percent, depending upon the overall market situation. But that will uh, that, that will give us an opportunity to have multiple sources of funds. Funding, right, right. Got it, got it. So point number two was uh, like I was looking at uh, the number of NBFC tie-ups that we've added during this quarter. While while we continue to add organic organic branches, uh, you know, so we've added some eight nine branches. We have been proactive on adding NBFC partners as well. 
but if you look at the split of uh, you know this uh, this nbfc partner driven book has come off or has been coming off so is it fair to assume that our organic lending is at a relatively higher ticket size versus the nbfc partner driven business not at the higher ticket size is our organic lending in absolute amount uh, as i shared which is now 6733 or 6832 right. uh, right. will be around 70 to 75 percent within next few years and uh, we as as i as i have told number of times that we have a fantastic experience with our nbfc lending partners too so we don't mind adding on to new lending nbfc partner uh, as we go forward because in absolute terms that amount will increase in relative it's a percentage is a shift from our direct retail uh to indirect return but in absolute uh, terms the amount has to increase so it is an it is an cautious decision on the part of the company to have more and more partnership to have uh, limited exposure on each one of them and have a well diversified asset base there also got it it's the organic business that we are building or which we have already done commendable job on so is the average ticket size relatively higher than the partner driven business like is it fair to assume that way ha huh, yeah yeah in in certain product it is say for example in products like annual in products like sme it will be higher in terms of two wheeler and srto it will be almost same got it got it and if you look at last couple of quarters the calculated yields have come off uh, uh, so so what explains that i think you need to go on a product wise basis because have average calculated yields will not always give the right picture because of so many uh, variations and so many dynamics in that but if we if we talk on an uh, overall basis i think on a concentrated basis we maintain a minimum of 7% at an uh, overall yield combined yield of around close to 16% and then we are left after the credit cost and the operational cost we are left with around uh 3.75 to 8% of uh, profit before tax and 2.8 after tax right got it got it got it so thank you so much for answering all my questions and good luck for the thank next course thank you thank you next question is from the line of subranshu mishra from philip capital please go ahead um thank you for the opportunity to be being conversed uh, and uh, congrats on the set of numbers Uh, my first question is a partly answered just want to understand the nbfc partner sourcing uh, we've always focused on uh, uh, sourcing mel and two wheelers and uh, i thought that we source most of our sme loans on our own so just wanted that clarity as to how we have structured the uh, nbfc partner sourcing now in each of the products and uh, if we are doing higher ticket sizes organically what would be the uh, credit risk and risk management on our own versus a partner sourcing that's my first i'll come to the second uh, after this one thanks so in terms of our NB- nbfc partnership i think uh, they contribute very meaningfully as far as annual is concerned uh, to the extent of uh, say around 40 40 40 to 45% in sme they contribute uh, anywhere around uh, say uh, around 25 to 30% and in two wheeler and uh, srto in line with our overall uh, mix of anywhere between 20 to 25 to 30% so but for uh, annual the, they more or less uh, con- contribute uh, equally uh, in terms uh, in terms of uh, on our organic growth and in terms of the risk management as you know that uh, we have been a company who have believed uh, in growing very cautiously uh, putting uh, the credit risk and the profitability before just the growth so if you see our sme portfolio whereby we have increased our ticket size to an average of 20 lakhs of rupees the quality of the portfolio has been maintained uh, in the most satisfactory manner and as and when we increase our ticket size that will be the endeavor to see to that that how the credit quality is maintained and then uh, go on the growth part on those high ticket side so that fundamental uh, that, that 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 fundamentals will be observed as far as operations are concerned and the sort of and in terms of our borrowing method we still have a significant portion of uh, cash credit or uh, overdraft which comes in as an expensive way of borrowing 
uh, of course, uh, we might be keeping that to roll over uh, various uh, loans or maybe uh, for working capital. But uh, with the scraping upgrade, would you want to uh, retire some of this cash credit overdraft and then in lieu of that have more of CPs and NCDs, more of money market instruments than cash credit? So practically, if I share with you, cash credit uh, for us is proving to be the most uh, cost-effective borrowing as of now, because with the latest uh, or guideline before few years, where cash credit has to be hived off into 60% WCDL limit, which are rolled over every 90 days to 120 days, depending upon our relationship with the bank, and we get uh, the rates depending upon the rollover tenure, that is 90 to 120 days. So, as in fact, uh, the majority of our cash credit, whom, what we use, is in terms of WCDL, which is rolled over uh, every 90 to 120 days, without putting any stress on ALM, because that is a carve out of our main cash credit. Uh, having said that, uh, the, the other thing why over a period of time, uh, cash credit will remain constant is because of the fact that uh, uh, RBI and banks are of the opinion that NBFC should borrow less in terms of cash credit. But in our case, if we, even if we take cash credit at only as a one-year, uh, ten-year loan, we don't create any negative ALM. So we will be in a position to maintain or, uh, in terms of percentage, reduce this cash credit over overall AUM. Because if you see, this 1700 crores is constant uh, since last two, three years. That is reducing the percentage of cash credit to overall borrowing. But uh, that is because of the reason that uh, it is it is more of a mandate uh, that cash credit is, uh, should be limited uh, to a certain portion so as not to create ELR, but uh, not from the point of view of uh, borrowing disadvantage. On the on the contrary, we have two, uh, two advantages, uh, that in cash credit uh, being a floating limit, I can park my excess fund anytime in the cash credit account and use it, so I don't have any negative carry by investing the, uh, outside, uh, the, outside the limit. And secondly, as I shared with you, that I, I get the advantage of rolling over. And the new geography, just last question, so the, uh, the new geography that we have entered, uh, what projects are we doing and what would be our aspiration uh, to, to do future products which probably have not been added in the new geography. So. We are a multi-product company and any new geography is very, very, which we explore, we say to that, that how is the potentiality of the various products we operate in. And then with the uh, the way we built up our team and the, and the, the way we have the business plans, few of the products are introduced there. Say for example, in South, we opened Hyderabad with a view to, to cater to the SME borrowers first, and then we will be introducing other products. Maybe in North also we started with SME product, and now we have slowly introduced a commercial vehicle and we'll be doing two-wheeler also gradually. So whenever we open new geographies, uh, we see to that, that how, what is the potentiality of the various products we operate in, and then we, we start with one or two of the products, depending upon the team we built, and then the intention is to introduce all the products gradually. Understood, sir. I'll come back in with you, so thank you so much, just to talk. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. So my question was on, you know, given the current environment where, you know, uh, all on the uh, on the credit side we're seeing uh, good growth and the, the, the environment is also pretty buoyant. Do you think, you know, uh, we can strive for higher growth in the UN by let's like, uh, by let's like, say, you know, 30, 35 percent or will we continue to focus on, you know, 20, 25 percent kind of growth over the next uh, year or two? So we, uh, as I told you, a 10 year is a medium term view and uh, just to share with you, uh, to do a 30-35% growth, there were so many enabling situations from the point of view of market size and uh, macro headwinds from time to time. But uh, being in the industry for more than 28 years now, uh, I personally believe that even growing at around 20 to 25% is doubling your AUM every three, three and a half to four years. And that is a tall order in a lending business if you want to prioritize quality and profitability both. And with companies like us who use a self-propelling capital requirement model, I think this is an ideal mix for us irrespective of the uh, 
पॉजिटिव अबाउट द पॉजिटिव एनवायरमेंट सो व्यूर वॉट वी हैव डन ओवर ऑल दिस इयर्स इज दैट दैट वी आर नॉट गॉट ओवर एक्साइटेड बाय द बाय द हेडविंग्स नॉट हैव बी बॉक्ड डाउन सब्सटेंशियली वेन देर आर चैलेंजेस सो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ग्रोथ ऑगर्स वेल for a company in my view especially in the landing space and that also is a tall order and a, and, and and a very decent growth you get by doubling your aum and net worth every 3 to 4 years true true sir and sir uh, on the rating upgrade given the uh, rating has now been upgraded to the category so you know so what uh, uh, on the liability mix side how do you see this uh, shifting over the next Uh, two years, you know, currently our uh, term loan is around 54 percent, cash rate is around 10 percent. So how do you, and the direct funding and the rest of the things? So current, so how do you see this thing shifting uh, over the next uh, year or two? You know, what mix, what ideal mix would you like to have on the liability profile, and how is that expected to impact our cost of borrowing over the next year or two? I think with rating upgrade, the, the major advantage will be in in terms of touching the capital market. Uh, so our our uh, our borrowing from capital market from currently around 10 to 12 percent should settle between 15 to 20 percent in next uh, two to three years, depending upon the overall environment uh, and the comparative rates we get. And plus, uh, adding on other institutes where we now start qualifying. uh financial financial institutes now we start qualifying uh, for getting uh, the credits from them so in short uh, the idea will be to be less dependent on banks uh, increase our capital market exposure uh, to try and explore other financial institutes who can now take exposures they have given our credit upgrade accompanied by uh, the reduction in rates so very difficult to predict the exact configuration but uh, this is this is the line uh, of uh, this is the direction in which we will be moving so sure. and on the on the bank loan side you know uh, given our rating of great how much reduction in our uh, interest cost due to you know on term loan and cash credit when you will become for renewable over the year so uh, as for the our bank loan in visually is linked to one year ancilla And uh, the spread or the re- or the renewal happens once in a year, or or when we uh, ask for a fresh uh, investment from them. So we see that uh, the impact uh, or the cost of borrowing uh, reducing uh, reduction coming in next three to six months, uh, depending on the uh, impact of MCL on on the on the cost of fund of banks. By how much do you expect? So we expect that uh, around the. Uh, So we expect uh, our spread to be reduced between 15 basis point to 25 basis point in a three to six month uh, period. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Anishu. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, congratulations for strong numbers, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, okay. So, the first question is on uh, the bank addition plan that we have and the target market in geography for FY25. Uh, second question is on if you can share separately the DPD bucket of uh, salary PL as well as uh, in CV, uh, the CV book that we have. Hi, uh, Dwanel on this side. So, if we talk about the geographical plan, uh, so uh, as as we have communicated earlier that we are pretty strong on the western side, with uh, almost uh, 60 branches in Gujarat and 40 each in MP Rajasthan and around 30 branches in Maharashtra. So, we will be penetrating deeper into Maharashtra, Rajasthan, MP number one and number two that we are planning. We have already started. Ex, uh, putting up our uh, you know, feet on the ground in north and south so we expect that the incremental uh, 20 30 branches that we are planning to add uh, within next 6 uh, to 9 months i think around uh, uh, 40 45% of them will be from the north and south so uh, in south uh, telangana uh, karnataka tamil nadu these are the three states we are focusing upon and in north delhi ncr and uh, Uh, geography is about that. 
so so going forward i think incremental you can expect on west uh, mp rajasthan maharashtra and on south uh, three states and north uh, one or two states got it and on the dpd buckets in uh, salary pl and uh, tv book hmm. so uh, salary pl is around 3.38 uh, stage 3 92% is stage 1 and uh, cv uh, you write for na hmm. cv is 4.12% uh, stage 3 and uh, 91% uh, current portfolio stage 1 portfolio okay okay sure uh, and if you just last me you know the leagues uh, it is just uh, you know separate leagues for cv book and uh, salary pl the spl yield is around 20 21% and srto is also uh, ranging from 19 to 21% great thank you so much best of luck thank you the next question is from sarvesh gupta from maximal capital please go ahead uh, good evening sir and congratulations on a good set of number um so uh, on the housing finance side um, we have seen a strong growth uh, but at the same time our uh, i think the npa numbers have been going up uh, steadily as well so how do we see this sort of a, a phenomenon to get uh, normalized and at what levels uh, we should sort of see stable uh, in numbers in stage 3 uh see uh, on a smaller portfolio and a less seasoned portfolio uh, we were around 0.5% and right now we are at around 0.6% uh i think in the long run we will see next stage the assets as a portfolio season and especially in the borrower zoom we are we are working serving that is in the affordable space we will see this housing finance uh, uh, nps to settle anywhere between 0.8 to 1.2% going forward and uh, that that is that is being think uh, with our expectation on this this type of borrowers and just to add to that that uh, in npas that does not necessarily mean credit loss as far as the housing is concerned because we operate at a very conservative ltv so ultimately at credit cost will be at sub 1% level in our housing finance company and in this sort of a low ticket um, uh, lending in the affordable segment uh, while there is a security but uh, uh, on in terms of the capability to possess it possess it back and sort of sell to recover your loan is is that on a practical basis how does that work and do you see any sort of a challenges on that front so there are two aspects to it uh, we don't work on any compromised uh, uh, titles so the titles in our case are very clear uh, that is what i was sharing that we took some time to develop our housing finance business because we wanted to understand the title dynamics in each of the geographies we operate in uh, so given that fact uh, the with the propensity to sell the property fast increases but uh, having having said that uh, it is uh, we never finance uh, any of the properties with a view that it uh, we can repossess and sell it So at the first instance, the credit is quite conservative. Second is once we repossess it with clear title, it might take time, but we are in a position to sell it depending upon the geographies we work in. But quite sellable. Okay, okay. And on this, um, you know, the expansion of the branches. So almost forty, forty-five percent uh, was coming from your non-core sort of an area. now increasingly you know as geography i mean the economy is getting bigger every year uh, because of the growth and everything uh, west itself uh, seems to be a large enough market for you at your size to be able to generate that 20 25% growth so i mean what is leading to uh, leading us to sort of grow more in geographies is the current core geographies of let's say maharashtra gujarat is that not enough to satisfy you know additional 1000 crore 1500 crore that we need uh, or sorry 2000 odd crore that we need for growth 
Hi, Dhoni Lagan here. Uh, so, uh, as you said, yes, uh, I think West has good potential. Uh, I think we are working in good states in West. Uh, lucky to be present here. Uh, what we, the, the strategy in expanding in North and South is planning for the next uh, three to four years. So, we take our own free time in terms of developing the geographies uh, uh, and penetrating them uh, uh, more deeper in terms of uh, Tier 2, Tier 3 cities. We take our time. If you look at our progression in, say, MP Rajasthan three years ago versus now, you will see that majority of the branches, three to four years ago, majority of the branches, almost, to say, around 50% of the branches would have opened up in last two to three years. But we were present in MP Rajasthan, we are present in MP Rajasthan since more than five years now. So, next, so this is preparation for next three to four years, uh, and we think that having a good diversified uh, geographical mix also will help us uh, go, uh, going from 10,000 to 20,000 crores uh, and, and trying to understand the demography, customer profile, business segments. So, so just readying ourselves for the future and that is the reason that we are trying to penetrate and expand more into unknown territories, potentially unknown territories for us uh, uh, where we have not operated earlier. Okay. On the rating upgrade, this 1520 basis point that we may gain in terms of our cost of funds, uh, my assumption is that you will be able, you will be passing it on, right? So keeping your ROA guidance broadly in the same area, is that true, or is it going to be appropriated by us? So how should we look at your, uh, you know, 2.75 to 3.25 ROA guidance? Will that get uh, will that see an upward revision with each rating upgrade because we are going to gain size uh, with every few years and that can also lead to some more rating upgrades a uh, few years down the line. I think uh, when I talk about 2.75 to 3 percent ROA all this thing is built in. So when we when we forecast that 2.75 at a particular place and then we talk about 3 percent aspirational the range bond ROAs we built in all these uh, aspects that the rating upgrade will happen, economies of scale will kick in, uh, the direct distribution can add on to a few more percentage, few basis points more in terms of uh, ROAs. So you are writing your assumption that uh, we'll be, uh, we will be consolidating our position between 2.75 to 3 percent ROAs uh, rating upgrade. And finally, right now we are at a four times debt to equity uh, broadly. Uh, while we n may not have an immediate need of raising funds, but given that our core engine is churning out 16% ROE plus there is some dividend and then we aspire for maybe around closer to 25% growth. So to what leverage are we comfortable at a console level? So this four can ma max move out to uh, what leverage level and and hence you know by when we necessarily will need to raise funds what will be the timeline so in terms of uh, leverage we will be comfortable at around between 4, 4 to 4.5 or 4.6 in our parent company uh, which is well accepted given our track record in the market and in the housing finance it will be anywhere between 4.5 to 5 percent and uh, on the capital requirement, with 16%, close to 16% ROA is de-risking at around uh, t between 20 to 25% to assignment, 5% through co-lending and all. I think uh, a growth of around 20 to 25%, take a mean of around 22.5%, will be a self-propelling growth. But having said that, as I shared, we already have an enabling resolution and given an opportunity in terms of valuation and the right set of investors. Uh, we we are uh, uh, we might uh, infuse capital uh, to further consolidate the balance sheet. Understood, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one. The next question is from Hardik Doshi from White Whale Partners. Please go ahead. Okay. Very nice. Uh, Hardik Doshi from White Whale, you may go ahead with the question. Yeah, just a quick uh, follow up, uh, you know, to the previous question on geographic expansion, where you mentioned you want to get into new areas because it takes a long time to understand the market. Similarly, are you looking 
at uh, maybe entering any other newer products and like, trying them out or these are the products that you want to stick to for let's say the next three to five years so as we have communicated earlier i think uh, uh, a carve out from our current lease portfolio will be the used car division so used car is something that we are piloting with right now and uh, i think within next uh, uh three four quarters so uh, it should start taking up shape and that will be one more product which gets added to our wheels portfolio uh, we have already started deploying some team piloting and and uh, we are trying to understand the market and slowly and gradually will scale it up once we have the confidence and the full understand and uh, as a subset of our sme business so, so it it I, we can call it a sub product Uh, it will fall under the SME bracket is the supply chain finance. So that is also a very good opportunity, uh, which uh, we are seeing both in our existing customers uh, and the uh, and uh, acquisition of new customers as well. So supply chain as a subset, uh, but it will get combined with our uh, SME uh, piece only. But uh, those are the two pieces where uh, which uh, we are working upon right now. Got it. Got it. And uh, you know maybe uh, if uh, from a geographic perspective, they say three to five years out. How big do you see the north and south as a percentage of our uh, loan book? So I think in the next uh, two to three years, I think it should contribute meaningfully at any year between twenty five to thirty percent. That is what we uh, anticipate within next two to three years. And this would mainly be our Rajasthan entity because that's where we entered first. Or you're talking outside? Of I'm it? talking about south. I'm talking about south and north. So 20, 20 to 30 percent is the uh, new geographies that we are currently working. That will contribute uh, around 20 to 30 percent in terms of the overall U.S. in next two to three years. Now uh, west, west, uh, I think Gujarat uh, will will lead the pack with around uh, 40 percent. And uh, uh, Maharashtra MP Rajasthan uh, will be equally divided at around ten, uh, ten to twelve percent each. Hmm. Okay, so then that's a pretty meaningful growth in three years if you want to get to that level for just north and south, which is outside of our core, which is Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, right? Hmm. Hmm. Yes, so I think uh, that is why we are setting up early now, uh, getting our uh, uh, feet on the ground there, and and we we anticipate that the markets are good uh, from our limited experience and from the uh, peer reviews that we have done. I think the uh, markets are huge for the products that we are operating in, so uh, we can't ignore those markets. And I think uh, uh, if the uh, if our retail distribution keeps on growing at the pace which which is which it is going at growing at right now. I think that number is achievable. Yes, but you know, just asking the question which the previous participant asked in in that this context, right? Uh, you know, are you hitting any kind of constraints of growth in Gujarat? Because because our size, you know, I mean, a ten thousand crore is nothing compared to the products that we are in, right? Hmm. So. Uh, again, you know why not? You know the geography is there's lot, there's very large market, addressable market. Why go into newer areas when there is so much room in our existing areas? So, uh, as you rightly said, there is good opportunity in the west, and that is why our expansion in the west is also happening at a good pace. So, as as I had earlier mentioned, uh, uh, the number of branches that we opened up in uh, uh, western states other than Gujarat. the number has gone up uh, sizeably in the ne- uh, last 2 uh, to 3 years so uh, we are facing any constraint per se but uh, we are anticipating that uh, the geographical diversification will be good and and getting ready for it early uh, will be helpful rather than say at the, the uh, say two years down the line increase in the portfolio very rapidly in other states is something which has not been our Uh, way of working. So we we feel that going little early and and if you notice if you have noticed uh, that we had we had very minor presence in south around since five six years now, but we but we were not growing it. So now we see that the opportunity is good diversification of portfolio and uh, also uh, increasing these western parts uh, meaningfully in the next two to three years. We feel that this is a good strategy. But per se. 
if you talk about constraints, we are not seeing any major constraints in terms of growth. The major contribution still for this year and next year will be from the Western part. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the last question in queue. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. So thank you, everyone. And uh, as uh, shared by me and the team, that we are very confident uh, going forward and in consistence to our belief of uh, uh, in consistent uh, consistent to our belief uh, of growing fundamentally, uh, we will will we'll, uh, we'll continue to work on the same line and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Dan Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.